we had a members only live, which if you're not a member and you want to catch that, um, you can become a member. That's the first thing you can do is just become a member. And uh, what do you call it? Uh, you can catch that that live that I did yesterday. Or if it's not in the cards for you right now to, to become a member, you can check it out on on either Spotify or or Apple podcast or tell Alexa or Google to play the most recent Drunk Turkey Show ep, um, podcast episode and it'll come up. Go check that out. Yes. Yesterday I had my members only live. The question came up about some reservations that the coworkers may or may not have made. Um, you know, there's some allegations that have been out there for a bit. And as far as, you know, did somebody in the, in the family talk, did they speak to uh, law enforcement and do any of those type of things? Uh, I think we should. Uh, so this is off of hollywoodlife.com. This is Brian Coburger's family, everything to know about his parents and sisters. And this was published October 26, 2023. It states here, Michael Coburger Jr., this is going to be his father, says both Brian's parents were employees at Pleasant Valley School District for many years. Michael was a maintenance worker at the school district from 2006 to 2019. We accepted the killings. Michael had flown out to Washington to travel home to Albrightsville, Pennsylvania, with his son, according to Newsweek. In mid-December, the father and son drove for about 2,500 miles in the white Hyundai Elantra that police had told the public to be out on the lookout for. Brian stayed with his family through the holidays until his arrest on December 30th. Here after the Idaho murders, it was revealed that Brian had his had first been arrested in 2014 for misdemeanor theft when he allegedly took his sister's phone per ABC News. It was actually Michael who had called law enforcement about the stolen property. Brian didn't serve any jail time for his arrest. As mentioned above, Mary Ann Coburger was also employed by the Pleasant Valley School District until 2020. She worked as a paraprofessional assisting special needs students, according to the Post. Besides uh, her work in school, Marianne occasionally wrote letters to the local paper, po uh, Pocono Record. In June 2022, she wrote on reflecting the school shootings in America. She also shared a poem that her daughter had written about the tragic shooting in Uvalde, Texas. As I sat this morning reeling from yet another school shooting, I found myself wrestling with which actions need to be taken to stop all madness. What is the answer? Gun control measures, mental health intervention. Marianne wrote, as I read the poem, I thought, whatever the solution, I pray we consider the children before the gun. Amanda Koberger, not much is known about Brian's older sister, Amanda. Following her brother's arrest, it was reported that both she and her sister, Melissa, had each been fired from their jobs in March of 2023. While it's not clear what Amanda did for work, she also was an actress, but only had one credit in a 2011 horror film two days back per IMBD. Now, that movie was pretty weird because it was a slasher movie. I saw the, some of the parts of the movie where she comes out in. It's like a uh, like an indie film type of thing. I didn't see the whole movie. I, don't, I, don't, I couldn't tell you what it's all about. I think I saw maybe four minutes. Blue, have you have you seen this movie? I just seen the clips. Uh, Melissa Koberger is Marianne's in Marianne's letter to the Pocono re Record. She had written that M Melissa worked as a mental health therapist in New Jersey. As mentioned above, her mother had also shared a poem that she wrote about the Uvalde shooting. Shooting like her sister, it was reported that she had been fired from a job. What do you think about that, Big Blue? That these two young ladies have gotten their you know, they've gotten fired from their job for something that their brother did, allegedly. I don't, I'm, I'm not sure if it's 100 percent true. Mm -hmm. I mean, because they got fired for something somebody else did. They can actually lawyer up and sue the company. So I don't I mean, unless they're, the company is that dumb to lose that kind of money. But I think it's something else. Well, you know, you're right. But the thing is, too, I think one of them was a mental you know, health professional. I'm not sure where she worked or whatnot. I don't know if that could be some sort of effect on her job. And I don't know what the other person did as, a, as a, for a living. I don't think it's right, to be honest with you. You can't control what somebody else does. Now, I know you're saying that you think it might be because of something else. But for both of them to get into some sort of trouble right after, you know, their brother gets arrested and both of them to get fired. That's, that's too much coincidence. It could have been they me. stopped attending work for a while because people are trying to harass them at work. Oh, you're know, right there. Interviewers and you don't show up for work a certain amount of days, they'll fire you. Yeah. That can be true, but it'd be one of the things where you talk to your boss, like, hey, can I take vacation for a couple of weeks or leave a leave of absence uh, without pay? They're, they have options. Yeah, they definitely do. Um, I think that if they did get fired, they'd have a pretty good solid case for unemployment because it's out of their control what somebody else does. In this article, there was one paragraph that I, I passed over, but I want to go back and read it. And this kind of goes along with what we're going to be talking about today, which is, you know, who talked, if somebody talked, did someone talk? So in this, in this paragraph, it says, following Brian's arrest, his family released a statement via his public defender showing support for Brian, while, it, while also expressing sympathy for the victim's family, per the New York Post. In quotations, it says, we have fully cooperated with law enforcement agencies 
in an attempt to seek the truth and promote his presumption of innocence rather than judge unknown facts and make erroneous assumptions. Now, a lot of folks took this statement as that they were backing Brian Koberger and they thought that he was innocent. After reading this right now, Blue, do you th do you take that out of that sentence? No, I'm just saying that. Do you think that they think he's innocent based off of that sentence? Let me read it one more time. It says, we have fully cooperated with law enforcement agencies in an attempt to seek the truth and promote his presumption of innocence rather than judge unknown facts and make erroneous assumptions. In a sense, they're going with innocence, but because they couldn't trust the facts. No, I don't think that at all, man. First and foremost, it says they fully cooperated, which means that, in my opinion, one of these persons talked, if not more than one, if not all, talked to law enforcement, referencing their time with Brian Koberger, what they saw, what they suspected, what they didn't suspect. You know what I'm saying? So if they fully cooperated with law enforcement agencies, then they spoke to police officers. And I think that's important to, to understand. And this also says here, promote his presumption of innocence. And don't say his innocence. It says presumption, which is given to everybody, uh, whether you're guilty or not guilty, or if you did it or didn't do it, until you've been you know, found guilty, there's the presumption of innocence. Now, I know that there's somebody in here saying that they, they're friends with the family and uh, of the Kobergers, and they know that they're backing them up 100%, this, that, and a third. And that may be very much true. I also have some word that they have cooperated with law enforcement as well, and at least one of them, if not more. To me, this says they have fully cooperated with law enforcement agencies. Now, let's go up to the next article real quick. This is from The Independent. It says Brian Kober's sister searched car for evidence before police swooped in. It says Brian Kober's sister feared that her brother was involved in the stabbings of the four University of Idaho students before police swooped in on their parents' home and arrested him for murder. All right, according to the bombshell report, sources told NBC Dateline that one of the accused killer's older siblings grew increasingly suspicious of her brother and his behavior when the family gathered to spend the holidays together. Her suspicions were so great at one point her uh, several family members searched Mr. Koberger's wide launcher for possible evidence of the crime, they said. Now, this is coming from a source. Now, in the last article, it said that they fully cooperated with police law enforcement agencies. So who do you think this source is, Big Blue? I want to say it could be, you know, what, the, the sisters had a, a good friend or a boyfriend. Mm -mm. Somebody they trusted that information. No, nah, it's a cop, man. Whoever's coming out with this information was an, is a Pennsylvania officer. And I'm not sure how the Idaho gag order would prevent a Pennsylvania officer from speaking on what Brian Koberger's family members may have said, whether it was in a written or verbal statement or if it was something that was just spoken out loud during the chaos that was him getting arrested. You know, like, oh, my God, I, we thought it was him. We even searched his car. You know what I mean? That could have been just something that they they yelled out or said out loud versus something that they were trying to purposefully, you know, put into that, uh, you know, in that direction. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Okay. And this is the sources told, uh, you know, Dateline, one of the accused killers over siblings grew increasingly suspicious. So it goes, her suspicions were so great that at one point, several family members searched Koberger's white Elantra for possible evidence of the crime. Madison Mogan, Kaylee Gonsalves, Anna Kernodal, and Ethan Chapman were found brutally stabbed to death in an off-campus home in Moscow, Idaho, that the three women shared with two other roommates on the 13th of November. All right, so this, this is where it gets back. It says, the source, Mr. Koberger was constantly wearing latex gloves, including inside their home. Now, that's interesting. That tells me that the source is Brian Koberger's sister, because the source know. said that he wore gloves inside. Well, to me, the way I read it the first time, it sounded like she was saying their home as if it was there, like both of them. Well, why would they say their home if it was just solely him? Wouldn't it say, in, including inside, you know, his family's home? Yeah, it sounds like it. Maybe just the way they typed it. But. The source said that Koberger was constantly wearing latex gloves, including inside their own home. Their own home. It doesn't sound like, like somebody talking about Koberger and his family home or his parents' home. Or even if he lived there, his own home. Yeah, it sounds like it's somebody from inside the house. Mm -hmm. That's what it sounds like to me. One of his two older sisters began to wonder if he could have played a part in the murders. At one point, she raised concerns with her other family members. She loudly pointed out that at the time of the murders, her brother was just living uh, just a few miles from the crime scene, and that he drove a white Elantra, the making color of the vehicle at the center of the investigation along with his bizarre tendency to wear latex gloves at the time. She believed that the family should consider that Mr. Koberger might killed four victims, the source said. 
So there's a lot of details that this source knows. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. There's a lot of details about, you know, she loudly pointed out at the time that her brother was living just a few miles away. Like, that's a uh, interesting detail there. White Elantra only lived a few miles away. Along with his bizarre tendency to wear latex gloves at the time, she believed that the family should consider that Mr. Coburger might have killed the four victims, the source said. So the latex gloves weren't something common. That's interesting. Now, he'd only been in Pullman, Washington for a handful of months, maybe three or four. So this must have been something that he developed something. Yeah, I would say it doesn't say he would teach her the gloves either. I don't think the neighbors uh, say he would walk out with gloves on to throw his trash. But, you know, you never know if they ever saw him. That's interesting. And I, and I will say, I've heard some things. Like I said a few times when people have asked me, do you know things that maybe others don't? The answer is yes. This might be one of them. So let's continue. Mr. Koberger's father allegedly defended his son and insisted he could have not been involved. But the concerns were clearly big enough for several of the family members to reportedly decide to search the 28-year-old's vehicle to look for possible evidence. Now, the big word here is reportedly. They reportedly decided to search the 28-year-old vehicle. So that, uh, somebody reported that down. Source, police officers. By that point, police said Mr. Kober had already been spotted cleaning his car out with bleach. And so the family members didn't find anything of note, the source said. Now, here, here's the other thing about that is it doesn't say who spotted him cleaning his car out with bleach. A lot of people, uh, you know, have come to the assumption that it was law enforcement that spotted him cleaning his car up with bleach, but it could have easily have been one of the family members, aka source possible. It is not clear if Mr. Koberger was aware of his family members' suspicions that he could have been behind the murders. I mean, I don't understand how not. If one of them yelled out loudly, you know, in their suspicion. Interesting. All right. Um, soon after that, in the early hours of the 30th of December, law enforcement descended on the family home and arrested him for the murders. At the time of the arrest, the source said Mr. Koberger was wide awake, standing in the kitchen, wearing latex gloves and putting his personal trash in plastic bags to take it out to the neighbor's trash can. See, this tells me that it goes back to it being law enforcement because they have some details about, you know, what he was wearing, what he was doing in the kitchen and, and what he was about to do. An attorney close to the Koberger, Koberger's family declined to comment on the relevations outlined in Dateline's killings on Ke in King Road. On Monday, May, May 22nd, he will appear in court for his arraignment. So that's about it, right? Let's just go back and read the entire statement, right? So we have it complete. It says, this is the Koberger family statement. It says, first and foremost, we care deeply for the four families who have lost their precious children. There are no words that can adequately express the sadness we feel, and we pray each day for them. We will continue to let the legal process unfold. And as a family, we will love and support our son and brother. We have fully cooperated with law enforcement agencies in an attempt to seek the truth and promote his presumption of innocence rather than judge unknown facts and make erroneous assumptions. We respect privacy in this matter as our family and the families of suffering loss can move forward through the legal process. I mean, they basically said they fully co cooperated with law enforcement, so they, they clearly talked about something. You know what I mean? No, I think maybe the dad maybe maybe talked to them, you know, or one of the family members. Well, this is saying that... The, this is the saying gag that, order were not. Right, right, and that's true. I and mean, this is also saying that it was one of the, uh, one of the sisters who was uh, apparently... Well, not so much talking to the media but talking to law enforcement and specified their concerns about brian Coburg. i don't know how accurate this is this could very well be fabricated but i have received uh, some information there was a marianne Coburg reservation at suraya or suraya i'm not sure how it's pronounced a restaurant out in philadelphia during the time that brian Coburg was out there and there was a request for dim dimming light or for a low lit area now, the reason I can't show you the picture of it is because it's a it's a photo of a screen. You know, this person, I think, works there. And in the reflection of the screen, you can see this person's face. So I'm not going to dox anybody or do any of those things. And from what I understand, a lot of these questions may have came up at this restaurant. Now, this restaurant right here just so happens to be the midway point between Albrightsville, Pennsylvania and New Jersey, where one of his sisters lives. I'll just kind of leave it at that. You know, is it, it was a res reservation for five. You have Brian Koberger's parents, you have Brian Koberger's um, sister, at least one, if not both. And then you may suspect that the last person would be Brian Koberger. But if any of these two ladies are married, which I don't know, or they're engaged, which I don't know, I would assume that maybe they would have brought somebody. And maybe it wasn't something that they accused Koberger to his face that he did something, but it may have been in a 
you know, in a setting like that where it was other family members who were talking about the situation. Now, I, I don't know. I, I wasn't there. So I can't say for sure that that's how it went down or whatever the case may be. But to my knowledge, from what I understand, that seems to be very accurate. But take it for what it is. I don't think he started wearing the gloves until he spotted what he thought might be surveillance detail inside his gated Poconos community. I thought it said that he was wearing gloves or it may have been reported somewhere that he was wearing gloves at the Albertsons video when he's inside there and at some of the other places at, at restaurants. But I, I could be wrong. I'm not sure. I mean, you don't see no gloves when the police pull him over. Right. Well, he's not he's out in public. Dead. You know, he's inside of his, he's inside his personal vehicle. You know what I mean? Yeah, but he said his parents' house and he still wore gloves there. What's that about it? No, you're right. I mean, it's um, it's 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 weird. I don't know. Maybe perhaps it was something that he started when he was in Pennsylvania. I, I thought I heard or saw or read, but I honestly can't remember. And it wasn't anything that anybody told me. I just thought I read or saw that it was at the Albertsons or one of the one on the surveillance tape after the murders. I don't know. All right, let's uh, let's let's get some phone calls coming in and get your guys' thoughts and theories on this. All right, we got our first call coming in. Three one four, you're on the air. What's going on? Hey, drunk turkey. Yes, Am sir. Yes, sir. You're on the air. What's up? Hey, uh, this is a uh, uh, something that uh, people don't know about. At any rate, Melissa Koberger was also in the entertainment biz. Uh huh. Not only her sister Amanda, Melissa. I found out. Back in uh, January 1st of 2023, researching her pictures on the net, she did a Jet Setter magazine spread. Uh Um, Throughout the magazine, she was dressed in goth attire, goth makeup, 